Dear child, will you wake? Will you open up your eyes? Betty, little one. Oh, the doctor? Let her come, let her come. Come in, Suzanne. What does the doctor say, child? Dr. Briggs, he bid me come and tell you, Reverend Sir, that he cannot discover no medicine for it in his books. Then he must search on. Aye, sir. He had been searching his books since he left you, sir. But he bid me tell you that you might look to unnatural things for the cause of it. No. No, there be no unnatural causes here. Tell him I accept the Reverend Hale Beverly, and Mr. Hale will surely confirm that. Let him look to medicine and put out all thought of unnatural causes here. There be none. Aye, sir. He bid me tell you. Speak nothing of it in the village, sir. Go straight home and speak nothing of unnatural causes. Aye, sir. I pray for her. Uncle, the rumor of witchcraft is all about. You best be down and deny it yourself. The rumor the part of the pilot's people, sir. I'll her. And what shall I say to them? That my daughter and my niece have discovered dancing like heathen in the forest? Uncle, we did dance. Let you tell them I confess it. But they're speaking of witchcraft. That is not what it is. Yeah, I could not go before the congregation when I know you have not spoken with me. Now, what did you do with her in the forest? Uncle, we did dance. But when you leaped out the bush of summer, she was frightened and she fainted. And there's the whole child sit you down. I would never hurt her, Betty. I love her dearly. I Look, you child, I have no desire to punish you. That would come in its time. But if you have trafficked with spirits in the forest, I must know it. For surely my enemies will, and they'll ruin me. But we never trafficked with spirits. Then why can't she not move herself since midnight? This child is desperate. It must come out. My enemies will bring it out. Let me know what you've done then. Abigail, do you understand that I have many enemies? I know it. There is a faction that has sworn to drive me from my pulpit. Do you understand that? I think so, sir. Now, in the midst of such disruption, my own household is discovered to be the very center of some obscene practice. Abominations are done in the forest. I want to listen to I saw Tangible wave her arms over the fire. Why was she doing that? And I heard her screeching and gibberish coming from her mouth. She always sings her way to songs, and we dance. I did not blink what I saw, Abigail, for my enemies will not blink it. I saw a dress lying in the grass. A dress? I had dress, and I thought I saw a, someone naked running through the trees. No one was naked, you mistake yourself. I right? saw it! Now tell me true, Abigail. Not my ministry is at stake. My ministry and perhaps your cousin's life. Whatever abomination you have done, give me all of it now, for I dare not be taken unaware when I go before them down there. There is nothing more, I swear to God. Abigail, I have brought here three long years to bend these stiff necked people to me. And now, just now that there must be something respect for me in the parish, you compromise the very character. I give you a home. Name in the town. It is entirely white, is it not? Why, I'm sure there's there be no blush about my name. Abigail, is there some other reason you, than you have told me for Goody Proctor discharging you? It has troubled me that you're now seven months out of their house, and in all that time, no other family has ever called for your service. They want slaves such as I, like you said, the Barbados, but I've no blood for face or any of them. Well, why, Goody Proctor, come in. It is a marvel, and surely a stroke of hell upon you. Oh, no, it's not. Ha ha! How high did she fly? Uh, no, no, she never flew. Why, so sure she did. Mr. Collins. She never can. Oh, good morning, Mr. Putnam. There's a providence to figure this out. It is a providence. What's out, sir? What are you talking about? Why, look, you and her eyes is closed. Why, that's strange. Ours is open. Did your little group is sick? I do not call it sick. The devil's touch is heavier than any sick. It's death, you know. It's death driven into the forked and hooved. Oh, pray not. Why, how does your child have? She has if she must. She never wakes this morning, and yet she walks. Hears not, sees not, and cannot eat. Her soul is taken, surely. So you've sent for Reverend Hale Beverly? Precaution only. He has much experience in all demonic arts. He has indeed, and found a witch in Beverly last year, and let you remember that. Goody Ann, they only thought that were a witch, and I'm certain there'd be no element of witchcraft no here. No witchcraft. Now look, you, Mr. Thomas, 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 I pray you, leave not to witchcraft. I know that you, you least of all, Thomas, would ever wish so disastrous to charge it upon me. Now look at you, Mr. Hale. I have taken your part with all intention, and I will continue. But I cannot if you hold back. Tom, if you cannot, and tell Mr. Paris to die. Reverend Paris, I have laid seven babies unbaptized into this earth. Believe me, sir, you never saw more hardy babies born, and yet it would wither in my arms the very night of their birth. I have spoken of things, but my heart has clamored into nations, and now this year, my Ruth, my only, I see her turning strange, a secret child. Shrivels like a sucking mouth will plug under her life, too. And so I thought to send her to your Tichiba. To Tichiba? What made Tichiba? Tichiba knows how to speak to the dead, Mr. Paris. Goody, Ed, it's formidable sin to conjure up the dead. I take it on my soul, but who else may tell us the person who murdered my babies? Woman! They were murdered! Murdered, Mr. Paris! And mark this for market! Last night, my Ruth, were ever so close to a little soul! I know it, sir! For her own now, she struck down the steps of power, and dark doesn't stop her mouth! There's a moral aside, Mr. Paris!
Don't you understand it, sir? There's a murdering witch among us, bound to keep herself in the dark. But to write these things, that they will, you cannot flick it more. Then you were conjuring spirits last night. Not I, sir. Titch, but... And Brooke. Now I am undone. You are not undone. Let you take hold of you. Wait for no one to accuse you. Declare it yourself. You have discovered which... In my house? In my house, Thomas? They will tell me with this. They will make him with... Uh, pardons. I only thought to see how bad he is. Why aren't you home? Who's in the room? Do you 
tell me you never looked at my window? Perhaps I have. I know you, John. I know you. I cannot sleep for dreaming. Can I, I cannot dream before I sleep and I wake and I walk out the house as though I see come through some door. Child. How do you call me child? Abby, I may mean, think of you salty from time to time, but I will cut off my hand before I'll ever reach for you again. Mm -hmm. I wipe it out of mind. You never touched. I thought we did. I thought we did not. Oh, I marvel how such a strong man in life. You speak nothing about this bitch. She's laughing at my name in the door. She's so lying about it. She's a cold. Do you look for women? I for you, John Proctor, that put knowledge in my heart. I never knew what pretend Salem was. I never knew the lying was as clearly as Christian women that probably meant. Now you made me turn the light out of my eyes. I will not. I cannot. You loved me, John. And whatever sin it is, you love me yet. Seven years. I do not wish to be put out like a cat whenever some majority feels the whiff. 
You people seem not to comprehend that a minister is the Lord's man in the parish. A minister is not to be so lightly contradicted. Why? There's either obedience or the church will burn like hell is burning. Can you speak one minute without we land back in hell? I'm sick of that. It is not for you to say what is good for you to hear. I may speak my heart, I think. What are we, Quakers? We're not Quakers here yet, Mr. Proctor, and you may tell that to your followers. <laughs> my followers? There is a party in the church. I am not blind. There is a faction and a party. Ag against you? Against him and all of you. <laughs> Why did I have find this party and I must join it? He does not mean that. I mean it solemnly, Rebecca. I like not the smell of this authority. And I have a crop to sow and lumber to drag home. What say you, Giles? He says there's a party. Let's buy this party. I think not, John. Mr. Paris, I beg your party. I never thought you had so much iron in you. Why, thank you, Giles. It raised the question of what the trouble be on these days. Are for ever soon anything else? I've been in court four times this year. Is it the devil's fault that a man cannot say good morning without even copying for defamation? You're old, Giles, and your hair is not as good as it used to. I have just now received four pound damages for you probably saying I burnt the roof off your house. And I never said anything of the sort. But I still paid for it. So I like to think I can call you death without charge. Now come along, will you help me with my lumber? I'll be damned first. A moment, Mr. Proctor. A moment. Just what lumber is that you're trying to help me? Let me ask you. My lumber. My forest by the riverside. Why, we have certainly gone wild this year. What anarchy is this? That track is in my bounds, Hunter. It is in my bounds. In your bounds? I bought that track from Goody Nurse's husband five months ago. He had no right to sell it. It stands clear in my grandfather's will that all the land between your grandfather had to have a willing man that never belonged to him. If I may say it plain. That's God's truth, too. He knew he pulled my, my North Passage. You had to break his parents before he says his name to it, though. Come on, John. Let's get your wood home. I feel something you won't work coming on. You won't want to have a and you'll fight to try it all. I will win, too. This fool and I. I'll have my men on me, Corey. I'm glad we win on you. Pray, someone, take me to Mr. Hale. Oh, it's good to see you again. Mine, they're heavy. They must be. They are waiting with authority. Well, you do come prepared. <laughs> we shall need hard study if it comes to tracking down the old boy. You cannot be Rebecca Nurse. I am, sir. Do you know me? It's strange how I knew you, but I suppose you look as such a good soul should. We've all heard of your great charities of Evelyn. Do you know this gentleman? A Mr. Thomas Putnam and his good wife, Anne. Putnam? I had not expected such distinguished company, sir. It does not seem false to name, Mr. Hill. Yes, come to our house. Let's say, my child. Your child ails too. Her soul, her soul seems to go away. She sleeps and yet she walks. She cannot eat. She cannot eat. Do you men also have afflicted children? No, no, these are farmers. Now, John Proctor, he don't believe in witches. I never spoke on witches one way or the other. Now, come along, child. Will you help me with my lumber? I think not, John. I have a few clear questions of my own to ask. I hear you be a sensible man, Mr. Hale. I hope you leave some of it in sale. Will you take a look at my daughter now? <coughs> we discovered her on the high road. Waving her arms as though she'd fly. Tries to fly. <clears throat> so that must be a sure sign of which you to fly. No. No. <clears throat> now, let me instruct you. We cannot look to superstition in this. The devil is precise. The rocks of his presence are definite as stone. And we must look only for his proper signs and judge nothing beforehand. And I must tell you all that I shall not proceed unless you are prepared to believe me if I should find no trace of hell in this. It is agreed. We will abide by your judgment. Good then. Now, mister, what were your first warning of this strangeness? Why, sir, I discovered her, and Abigail, and ten or twelve of the other girls, dancing in the woods. You permit dancing? Oh, no, no, it was secret. Mr. Paris' slave has knowledge of conjuring, sir. I cannot be 
sure of that, Lady Anne. I know it. I sent my child the life of Tituba who murdered her sisters. Lady Anne, you sent a child to find her the dead. Let God blame me! Not you! Not you, Rebecca! I'll not have you judging me anymore! Mr. Hale, is it a natural work to lose seven children before they live a day? Seven dead in childbirth? Aye. What book is that? What's there, sir? Here is all the invisible world. Caught, defined, and calculated. In these books, the devil stands stripped of all his brutal disguises. Here are all your familiar spirits, your incubi and sunkima, your witches that go by land, by air, and by sea, your wizards of the night and of the day. Have no fear now. We shall find him back if he has come among us. And I mean to crush him utterly if he has shown his face. Will it hurt the child, sir? I cannot tell. If she is truly in the devil's grip, we may have to rip and tear to get her free. I think I'll go then. I'm too old for this. What? Rebecca, we may have cover the boil of all our troubles today. Let us hope for that. I go to bat with you, sir. I hope you do not need to go to Satan here. I wish I knew. Abby! Sometimes I'll find myself 